Good morning, everyone. We welcome you to our service today. We celebrate together. We worship together in the spirit of the Lord. We celebrate Jesus Christ. Last week was great. God gave us a beautiful, wonderful day. We had a very nice attendance of 67. Thank you for coming and sharing. And uh, we appreciate it so very much. And thank you for joining us again today. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer together, if, if you will, as we ask God to bless us. Heavenly Father, we come before you now. We ask you, Lord, to, that you would bless us this day. Join us together in one mind, one heart, and one accord. Anoint us, O oh Lord, in the power of your Spirit as we worship you today. Minister, Lord, your grace, which is all sufficient for every need, and we'll give you thanks and praise for you. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, let's worship together.
God. How many are glad to be in the presence of the Lord today? A little easier to find a seat this week, isn't it? Amen. The Lord is here. We're here and He's going to touch us and bless us in this service. And some of you are not able to be with us because we're sick today. Or you're not able to be here in person for other reasons. And you're joining us by Facebook and we appreciate that so much. And, and we just pray that you'll be blessed as well as those who are here in the sanctuary by the Lord's presence by what takes place in this service today. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you in this place and we thank you. The song says how he loves, how he loves us. He is jealous for me. Loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I'm unaware of these afflictions he lives by glory, I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. Oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us.
You became a king forever. With a crown of thorns, you became a king forever. Yes, with a crown of thorns, you became a king forever. Yes, with a crown of thorns, you became a king forever. And you saved me, oh, and rescued me. Just a moment now.
to you and our praise to you. It's your breath, Lord, within us. You have given us life. We live because of you. You live in us. You live through us. Oh, yeah. 
are concerned, Sunday, May the 9th, Mother's Day service. I mean, Mother's Day is coming. All right. And then Sunday, May 23rd is Pentecost Sunday. We celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the church. And also on that same day, tentatively at this moment at least, 1 p.m., church picnic at Oak Ridge Prairie Park, shelter number two. We'll lock that in more for you later. But uh, keep that in mind. Put it on your calendar, and uh, we'll see if we're going to move forward or not. That's the date we moved it to from last fall, which had been moved from la the previous spring. So that shelter has been something that we have reserved for a long time, but changing the dates 
money's already been paid. And uh, so uh, we look to that, and we'll discuss that in more detail and share that information with you in the coming weeks. But for now, please mark that date. I invite you to turn your Bibles with me today to the book of John, chapter 11. Last week, if you recall our minds, you know, we lose track of things real very quickly. How many are with me on that? The last week was, was Easter, if you recall that. And uh, so I preached an Easter message. And uh, we talked about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why we celebrate Easter. And I discussed with you the impact that has on you and me. We also will rise. We have life through Jesus Christ. How many can claim spiritually you have, in fact, risen with Christ, right? You've already come alive through Jesus Christ. And the last part of the message last week I didn't get to, which is maybe this as well, because I have it this week. So this is actually a separate message to preach any time, not on Easter, and maybe that God was giving this to me, but it does tie in with that. I want to share with you the story of Jesus bringing his friend Lazarus back from the dead. And not just spiritually, but physically, right? It's a great miracle in the Word of God. It ties in with the whole resurrection concept. And so, with that in mind, our message today is Lazarus, come forth. And I want to share with you this theme, the, the God of our destiny. How many of the God is in charge of our destiny, that which will the outcome of our lives? That God is responsible for bringing to pass, if we cooperate, of course, what he has planned and intended for us. So let's look at John chapter 11, if you will. I'm going to begin at the moment for this purpose of reading in verse 32. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him. She fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead Four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you, you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you 
sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did, believed in him. Heavenly Father, we just pray that your word would impact us today. That your word, oh God, would minister to our hearts. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you're seated, you know, you know the drill. Give somebody an air high five, a hug, or whatever to let them know you're glad to see them in the house of God. If you're at home, you can do that too. Actually, you can do an actual physical hug with those in your own home. You know, feel free. Praise God. The God of our destiny. God looks at the big, the grand, the total picture. How many know that? He is the God of eternity. From everlasting to everlasting, God lives. He looks at things through that prism. Word of God says, whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. So he sees us through his eternal perspective, recognizing that the amount of time that humanity is here on the earth is a very brief moment. The Word of God declares that. How many, how many realize that? It's a brief moment. The whole history of humanity from beginning to end, from Adam to, to now and beyond. And each individual life certainly is much briefer. How many know that? Even Methuselah, who lived 969 years, that's a long time. I'm not sure I'd want to do that. How about you? But even that, in God's perspective of eternity, is just a moment. He sees everything. And we say earlier how he loves us. I hope you recognize God loves you with an eternal love. He loves you now at this moment. He cares about you right now at this moment. And everything that you're going through, every little detail of your life, and I've shared that with you previously. He also cares about you in the future. He cares about you in eternity. His relationship with you, his love for you is everlasting. And he doesn't just view us in the short term, in this the moment, that we view ourselves. He's thinking in terms of, I know you, I have rescued you, I have redeemed you, and I'm going to spend forever and forever with you. I never want to let you go. I never will let you go. Amen? That's how God sees us. We all know sin came into the picture and through Adam and Eve and corrupted everything and brought sickness and disease and death itself into the picture. And that's why Jesus went to the cross, as I shared last week. Jesus went to the cross and died for every one of us so that we could be free from the penalty of sin. How many are happy for that, about that today? Amen. But not only did he die on the cross bearing the guilt and the reproach and the responsibility for all of our sins legally before the throne of God, but he also rose again on the third day. And with him, as I shared last week, we also rise Spiritually, now, 
But we will rise not only spiritually, but physically when he calls. Amen. Meanwhile, because sin is still in the world, because of the consequences of sin, because we're in these mortal, natural bodies, and we live, we're living out our life, our destiny. God is in charge of our destiny. If we give our life completely to him. Then we deal with all the stuff that we have to deal with. Sickness. We have some that are sick this morning. Sadly. Disease. Getting older. None of us are getting older, are we? No, sir. We, we're getting younger. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, actually we're getting older. But we all deal with that. And the prospect of Jesus doesn't come first. All of us are going to are going to die. And the way God looks at that is that's just not really relevant to him, you know, because it's he's going to be with us forever. We have eternal life through Jesus Christ. He understands that how we feel about that, that we don't really want to go today necessarily, but he understands that that comes to every one of us. But God is the God of our destiny. And in this story we're going to look at, that we I just read the narrative, I can submit to you, and I think it's very clear. Lazarus, who was a friend of Jesus, along with his sisters, Mary and Martha, Lazarus died, and it was not his destiny to stay dead. Amen? How many can see that? That really wasn't the moment, we could say, expecting that he was supposed to die. God wasn't finished with him yet, so he did not remain dead. And we're going to see that in the story. Because God has the power over everything in our lives. Jesus is the great healer. He can even raise people from the dead. And so if he can raise people from the dead, he can heal any sickness, any disease. He can solve any problem. He can supply any need that we have because he's God. And he has the power. Now Jesus was in his human body. Now we have to, we have to state clearly that Jesus was fully human. And fully God at the same time. It's just something we have to accept by faith. I can't explain it to you in a way any of us can understand fully or completely. But he was both God and man. And he wasn't just an appearance in flesh as had happened. Most theologians believe in the Old Testament more than once where he appeared to people. Where God appeared, it was probably Jesus. It appeared to them in human form. But he was not a human being. When he came and was born of the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and blood, like we are. And so with that perspective, like all of us, let me start by saying Jesus loved everybody. He was not willing that he would perish. He had compassion on everyone, just like we're supposed to. But it's also true but he was closer to some people than others. Isn't that true? Loved everybody. Was closer to some than others. Don't be shocked when I tell you Jesus had some personal friends. Really? No. Yes. He did. And among those, there was a small group. Among those that at least are revealed in Scripture. Was this family... Of two sisters and their brother, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And they lived in Bethany, which is just a short distance, a suburb, if you will, of Jerusalem. And he would spend time with them when he had time. He would spend the night in their home and so forth. And they would play games. It's right in scripture, you can read it yourself. Share the meal. Watch a movie. No. But they would spend time like you do with friends. Whatever friends do to 
And it wasn't just all teaching as he did with others. It was, it was a personal thing where they were hanging out, really, seriously. I know he did some teaching, but he wouldn't just be with them because they were very close to him. Now to pick up the narrative, and I didn't want to read out all the verses, so I'm going to go back in chapter 11 if you have your Bible, if you're looking at it on your phone. And I, tr I trust you, if your phone is there, you're not playing games on your phone, right? You're not watching something else. You're looking at the scripture. I trust you with that. I know I can count on you, right? You're not texting somebody unless it's something good about, did you hear what the pastor just said? All right. That would be good. Otherwise, no. But anyway, if you have an actual physical Bible or if it's, if it's on, on your phone or however you're looking at it, let's back up to verse 1. Now, a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and his sister, Martha. It was that Mary who had anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sister sent to him, they sent word to him, they sent a messenger to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love, or you have this special relationship with, our brother, we know he's a personal friend of yours, just as we are, is sick. So let's start with that. Even people that are really close to Jesus. How many feel close to Jesus this morning? Get sick. Lazarus got sick. It's not good, but he did. But notice the response of Jesus. Here's good news. Verse 4. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Well, he's... We know that he ended up dying. How many know that? The word was, he's sick. Jesus said, it's not going to be unto death. He knew he was going to die, but he's... What's he mean? He's not going to stay dead. This is not a final death for him. Because this is going to illustrate the glory of God. Verse 5, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. A little later in the same chapter, when Jesus is speaking about it to his disciples, it's a few verses down, if you want to follow me. Verse 11. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend, notice again, personal relationship, right? Our friend Lazarus sleeps. Because they had come and told him that he was, had died. But I know that I may wake him up. I'm going to wake him up. He's asleep. Then his disciples said in verse 12, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Verse 14, that Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. That brings us to our text, beginning in verse 32, that I mentioned to you earlier. Lazarus is dead. Ordinarily, that's a, that's a pretty final statement, right? That's it. How many know that God has the power over everything, including death? Because he's the God of our destiny. But Jesus has said, you know why he's sleeping? Because he's making the uh, analogy there that when you sleep, then you wake up again. That you're just unconscious in sleep. And that's really what he's saying to them. Yeah, he's, he's really dead. But he's not going to stay dead. Because Jesus had the power to heal. Jesus had the power and the authority.
authority over all things, sickness and disease, problems and difficulties, situations and circumstances, power. Now that he's going to the cross and is risen from the dead, he has the power to save us. He has the power to heal us. He has the power to deliver us. He has the power over everything and every enemy that comes against our lives. Including death, because all of us will rise again one day. And so, and I don't, I'm not going to read all the verses, but it, it did say once he, Jesus received the news that Lazarus was sick, was very sick, it said he delayed a couple more days, like, no rush. Then he comes to where Martha and Mary are, and Martha encounters him first, and Jesus speaks to her and then he comes to Mary in verse 32. Mary says to Jesus, when she saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You could have healed him. He could have. What she didn't realize, a miracle even greater than just healing him at that moment. But for him to die and then to bring you back from the dead demonstrates even more power because Jesus has the power over death as well as sickness and disease. Amen? If you'd been here, my brother would not have died. So how do we relate? If in our lives, you know, some incorrectly would say, you know, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. That means nothing ever bad is going to happen to me. How I many know that's not true? And it's not because he's not with us. He is with us. And he is the God of our destiny. I can assure you of this. Whatever God's plan is for us, if we'll put our lives in his hands, if we'll have faith in him, we will succeed in that plan. We will fulfill our destiny. There isn't any power. The power of Satan is not capable of preventing us from accomplishing the will and the purpose of God in our lives. If that means delivering us from sickness, disease, if that means coming to our rescue when we're in financial need, if that means the enemy's just coming against us like a flood with all kind of stuff that would derail us and overcome us, he comes to our aid and our need because he is the God of our destiny. And he will fulfill his purpose in us. You're, if you put yourself in God's hands, and you do what you should do sensibly, because we do have free choice, you're not going to die until God is, releases you. You can mess that up. I decide just to walk in front of a truck. I'm probably going to be killed. Right? That's my choice. Stupid. Don't do it. Right? But I also believe this, that there's no power that can prevent God's purpose from being fulfilled in my life if I give my life to Him. Amen? So Jesus shows up and she says, He wouldn't have died if He'd been here, not realizing, you know, I'm going to bring Him back. So, when Jesus saw her weeping, remember, 
Not only was he very close to Lazarus, but also to Martha and to Mary. And so he's touched by that. How many know that Jesus is touched by our needs? He's empathetic. He has compassion. Jesus saw her weeping. He also saw the, the Jews who came with her were weeping. He reacted. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. He knows what's going to happen. He knows he's going to bring Lazarus back from the dead. You think he'd be doing cartwheels? No. He feels their pain. In his own humanity, he feels the sense of loss of a dear friend. How many recognize he still feels our pain? He still understands what we're going through. In a sense, when we cry, he cries too. If I can put it that way. And he says to them, where have you laid him? Show me where he is. And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And then verse 35, Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the Bible. Again, indicating his empathy with them and the sadness, the tragedy of the moment. Lazarus was not old. Here he is, he's died. He was overwhelmed. Jesus was overwhelmed with that emotion of that loss, the sorrow, the sense of how tragic a young man died in his prime. My friend, my friend is dead. The Jews said, see how he loved him. Some of them says, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Do you echo what Mary had said? If you've been here, why weren't you here? Why weren't you here? Oh, you can relate. Sometimes we're like that too. We don't say it quite like that. We say, where are you, Lord? I'm having a hard time here. If you would just, if you would just do what I want you to, <laughs> everything would be okay. This wouldn't be happening. Where are you? They're saying, where were you? You could have, you know, you were gonna, we got the word, you know, kind of like saying, you know, I think you probably got the word soon enough to dilly dally for a couple extra days and now he's dead. And I've shared this thought before, but I want to reemphasize it today. He's always with us. He's always with us. And he is the God of our destiny. And although it's true that he's not going to prevent us from ever experiencing any difficulty, any pain, any sorrow, it's also true he's right there with us. And he has the power to heal us, to deliver us, to supply our need. In the moment. And we're going to live for, with him forever. So if you're experiencing difficulty this morning, if you have a financial need, relational need, physical need, if you're sick, I just want to tell you, the Lord is able to heal you right now, this moment. But I also will tell you that doesn't mean you're never going to get sick again. How many know that's the way life is? Because sin is coming to the world. And although we've been redeemed, we still are subject to experience the results of that in our bodies, 
And everything that we're going through now is temporary. Temporary. Everything is temporary. If you go to lunch today, and I attend to, how many know that's probably pretty much a definite? Yep. And I'll be satisfied with my lunch, I'm sure, and I'll feel full enough, and I'll feel like I've accomplished something. You know what? Along about 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock, I'm probably going to be hungry again. Because everything is temporary. If I drink this water this morning, that doesn't mean, hey, I'm good forever. Never have to drink another drop. No, I'm going to get thirsty again. Everything's temporary. Even your permanent, I mean, phrase, phrase this right. Even your permanent relations, I hope they're permanent, of love between husband and wife. I have no doubt that Bill and Carol, who've been married for, I'm not going to say how many years, will continue to be as long as I know them and as long as they live because they made that commitment. I'm very confident that's, that's true. But it doesn't matter how many times in the past Bill has told Carol that he loves her. That is an expiration. She's going to want to hear it again. Right? He's going here again, and he wants to hear from her. Doesn't matter, he told her 20,000 times, 30,000 times, whatever in the past. He can't take the attitude today. Well, I've told you and told you, so there's no reason to tell you again. If anything changes, I'll let you know. And that's not going to work. I am just absolutely certain. When that anniversary comes around, well, it better be before that. He better be telling, he better be doing something special, right? Or there's trouble. Don't forget the anniversary. I'm going to tell you guys, never forget the anniversary. That is a huge mistake. While you're at it, don't forget the birthday, right? And it would be really helpful if every day <laughs> you would tell her, that you love her, and that would really be helpful. That would go a long way, right? And ladies the same towards your husband. All I'm saying is everything is temporary in this life, isn't it? Now these things that I talked about, love, is renewed in relationship. It's not just saying I love you. When we love somebody, that's renewed over and over again. That's the idea of a permanent relationship. It's renewed. Because everything is temporary. But eternity is forever, right? And so God is able to meet us in the moment. He always does. Thank God for that, right? Healing, deliverance, supply, protection, wisdom, guidance, all the above. God is right there in the moment. But that's only temporary because tomorrow has more problems and has more issues and more difficulties and possibly sickness and other things down the road because everything is temporary. But he is the God of our destiny. He's right there all the time, each moment in this temporary life that will quickly be gone. Eternity is forever. And everything is perfect in eternity. Healing is perfect. Deliverance and supply and all that is perfect in eternity. And our relationship, as I stated earlier, with God is one that is eternal. God loves us now and forever. And he is the God of our destiny. So if you put your life in his hands, he's going to do all of that He's going to do. And sometimes he comes to our rescue for as far as immediate problem now, and sometimes it's later. But whether it's now or later, he will heal you 
He will deliver you. He will supply your need, either now or later, because that's who he is, the God of our destiny. Mary and the Jews who were with her, their concept and perception was, Jesus, if he had been here, now, he wouldn't have died. But in God's plan, it wasn't now, it was later. A couple days later, it's going to bring him back from the dead. Right? So either now or later. Verse 38, then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Then he says, take away the stone. You know, and this is just so, this so evokes an image of how it just, just a very short time later after this, Jesus would rise from the tomb, as we shared last week, and the stone be rolled away, right? This is like a foreshadowing of that. Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, now it's not Mary's Martha said, Lord, you know, surely you realize by this time there's a, there's a stench. Dead people stink. For he's been dead four days by now. You know? I don't think you want that. Jesus said, did I not say to you that if you would believe you would see the glory of God? That's a thought, right? Believe. If we believe, God manifests His glory in our lives. The God of our destiny is always there. He doesn't always do exactly what we'd like, exactly when we want, and the way we would want Him to do it, but He's always there. And either now or later, He will come to meet our need. Amen? How many believe that? Then they took away the stone, verse 41. And he says, Father, I thank you. You've heard me. And I say that because the ones who are listening, I want them to know that, in fact, because I know, I know you hear me, but I want them to know that you hear me. And so what's going to happen is a miracle. I mean, like miracles. Miracles are great, right? He's the God of miracles. When he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice. I think that's important. He cries out with a voice of triumph. He cries out with a voice of authority. Not that you have to be allowed to have authority, but in this case, that's what it's suggesting to us. We can interject some thoughts here. A release of his emotions, right? Authority. And let's be honest, Lazarus, his spirit, his body's right there in that tomb. But his spirit's not there. It's a long ways off. Of course, it doesn't matter how loud he is. He's not going to hear him anymore, so I understand that. But it does kind of create that image, right? Of he's not right there. And so he cries out with authority in a way that would reach, you know, that had to be something to hear him cry out with a loud voice, right? That's echoed when Jesus was on the cross. It says he cried out with a loud voice. It is finished. Amen? So again, authority. Jesus has all authority over all things. What does he say? He cried with a loud voice. He says, Lazarus, he calls him by name, Lazarus, come forth. Come out of that, come out of that tomb. And again, you have to understand what had to take place. Well, if Lazarus is going to come out of that tomb, his spirit's going to have to be reunited with his body. Woo! Because he was in the place of the dead. Probably what we describe as paradise at that moment. Right? That's where he was. There's no doubt about that. That's where he was. His spirit... Can I 
second, this is another whole message. I'm not going to get on that. But his, he wasn't, his spirit wasn't floating around the air. No. His spirit was not floating around in the air. Spirits don't float around in the air. There are not ghosts. There are evil spirits, but they're not ghosts of people who are dead floating around in the air. And I'm sorry, that's just true. They either go to the place of torment or they go to the place where the believers go, right? So it's one or the other. They don't like to linger around. So he wasn't floating around. He wasn't having an out-of-body experience. He was with those who were dead in Christ. That's where he was. He's already there. He was all set. He had made the transition from this life to be with those who have died in the Lord. Already happened. As you know, that's ordinarily permanent, right? She said, no. Doesn't have to be. Lazarus, come forth. I want you to come back. Your spirit, come back. To be rejoined with your body. Called him back. Verse 44. And he who had died came out. His spirit rejoined his body. And he came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. In case you're missing, that's a miracle in itself. He's all wrapped. He's all wrapped up from head to foot. He's all wrapped up, you know, like this. And he's even got something over his face. You can't see where he's going. Well, how did he get out of there? That's a miracle in itself. But Jesus said, come forth. He had to come forth. How many know? When Jesus speaks, you know, everything obeys. It was a miracle. It didn't say how it happened, but he came out. And I hope you realize, at least my theology, I think you agree, on his own, in his own power, he couldn't come out of there. He's all wrapped up from head to foot. He's got this around his head. He can't even see where he's going. And he can't walk hardly at all, if at all. Probably couldn't even get up. You know, when Jesus rose from the dead, it said everything was just, just left there. He just like came out of his clothes and everything was just right there. And the head covering was just laying right there nice and neat. He just, he just came out. Well, that's just came out and all that still on him. Which you can't do on your own. So that's a miracle. He came out. Jesus said, I'm loosened. So, lest you doubt it, you know, you need to help this man. He can't free himself. So he didn't come out on his own, and he can't get loose now on his own. You need to, you need to free this man because he's, he's bound hand and foot. He's even got this covering on his head. You need to free him. We are free in Jesus Christ. Amen? So he had freed Lazarus from death. Because God was not finished with him. It's not over till it's over. Now, I want to submit to this to you. If Jesus is able to bring somebody back from the dead, is he able to take care of your need today? Yes. Either now or later. He's going to meet your need. Until he's done with you 
in this life, and then he's going to bring you home. That's, that's the way it is. Amen? And none of us know what that destiny is. I don't know. I can't tell you what my destiny is. I don't know how long I have left on the earth. God knows. I don't know. I do know this. If I put my life in his hands, and I have faith in him, and I try to do what I need to do responsibly for my life, I'm not going anywhere until he's ready for me. Amen? But when he's ready for me, then he's ready for me. Because my life is in his hands. He's the God of my destiny. Amen? Amen. And so Lazarus still had a purpose. So many believe because of the resurrection of Lazarus. And then if you look on further, I believe it's chapter 12. When Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem, we call that now Palm Sunday, there were many who were coming to, to, coming to Jerusalem because they wanted to see Lazarus, who had rose from the dead, risen from the dead. He had an impact on a lot of people, the miracle. Now, there's no doubt in my mind, I'm sure you know this to be absolutely true, he's not alive today, he died again. The Bible doesn't reveal how long God gave him. But there's no question that he died again. Because we all die. Unless Jesus comes first. But we will not die until he's finished with us. And there's no power that can overcome us or overwhelm us. Because he's the God of our destiny. Jesus is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is the supplier of my need. He is my protector. He is wisdom to us. He is grace to us. All sufficiency. Amen. Will you stand with me? Wherever you are today, we just want to believe that. Amen. The same Jesus that said, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. That same Jesus is here with us right now. That same Jesus one day, and it might be today, is going to shout with triumph from heaven. And he's going to say to all of us, come, you know, enjoy me in that heavenly place. He's going to say, come forth. You know, those that are in the grave are going to come forth in power. Those who are alive and remain on the earth will rise to meet him in the air and join those. Because his love for us is eternal. He's got you right now. He's got you in his hand. There's nothing you cannot overcome through him. There's nothing that you can't face. And it's through him that you can face anything. You can overcome anything. Because he has the power to heal you, deliver you, protect you. Whatever your needs are today, I just ask you to symbolically lift up your hand towards heaven and say, Lord, here are the needs I'm experiencing right now in this moment. I need healing. I need deliverance. I need your grace. I need divine supply. Right now, I lift it up to you, Lord. I lift it up to you, Lord. Right now. Because I know, Lord, right now, right now, either right now or later, you're going to meet my need. You're going to meet my need. Because you love me. And you have the power. You died for me. And you rose again on the third day. And you live. You live forever. And because of you, I live. I live forever. I live forever. Through you, Lord. Thank 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 you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
We have some very specific needs. Uh, this morning they've been brought to my attention. Let's remember Janice. I, I didn't realize. I knew Janice was sick, but Janice is recovering from COVID-19. She also made requests I sent out to you for her sister Linda, which had contracted it earlier. And we know that her sister was was having a hard time. She's been released from the hospital and everything, but she's still on oxygen. Her oxygen is really, really bad. And now her heart is only functioning about 25% capacity. And that's uh, that's really that's really bad. And God is able to heal. Janice is coming along pretty good. Let's believe that Janice will be completely healed. Let's believe her sister will be healed. Pray for Tammy Howard, who at the very least has a sinus infection and pretty severe coughing today. I hope she doesn't have anything more serious. That's bad enough. God's able to heal her. Let's pray for Sandy. As you know, you know we're lifting her up in prayer. She's not even with us today. They increased her pain medication and so forth. She's really makes her really drowsy. Because you know? we know the report wasn't what we wanted. To hear she has more extensive cancer than originally hoped for or thought to be the case. You know what I know? I know that God is able to raise her up in the healer. How many know that? Yes. Lord, you are able. So we're going to pray for these things and then. Then we're going to do something a little different after that. So, if you have additional needs, I want you to just raise your hand right now. If you have additional needs, we're going to bring them to the Lord together. Maybe some that are being posted on Facebook. Somebody might want to check that for us and see if there is. Carrie might want to check and see if there's anything in the comments. But right now, we are looking. Knowing, oh Lord, that you're on the throne and the, you have all power and all ability. We ask, oh God, for healing and deliverance and divine supply according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. To you be the honor and the glory and the praise. cautious today, but Bob, if you want to put your mask on, I want you to come in and stand in for Sandy, and then if you wear your mask, we're going to come and if Bob's okay with it, we're going to lay hands on Bob, and on behalf of Sandy, we're going to anoint a prayer cloth. We have a man gather around the altar. I just ask you to be cautious, and uh, but I think it's appropriate that we do that. I just feel like we should do that. If Sandy was here, I would pray for her directly, but she's not. How many know God can touch her in her home, right? But I do believe that a prayer cloth can be helpful. And so I ask you to come and just stand behind Bob if you stand here. There are prayer cloths under the table there. If you want to grab one out of that container, I'll grab my mask.
like we could probably take these masks off, but we're not going to. But we're going to agree. We're going to agree together in prayer and uh, and, and believe that this uh, prayer month is a point of contact. There's nothing you know, miraculous about prayer talk other than the fact that we are praying over it and it becomes a simple point of contact. And so we're going to agree together. Lord, right now, as Bob stands in for Sandy, Lord, we anoint this prayer clock. We believe, oh God, in your awesome power. We believe, oh God, in your awesome power to heal. And Lord, and, and our agreement, Lord, we pray that, that you would just touch Sandy, Lord, in a mighty, powerful way. You're the God of our destiny, Lord. And only you know, Lord destiny of her life, but I do believe, God, that you have the power to heal her right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, as we agree together for our sister, we just pray, oh God, that you would that you would perform a miracle, Lord, of healing, because you are the awesome, the mighty healer. Lord, I pray for Bob today, Lord, that you would help him, Lord, give him the strength he needs, God, in this trying, difficult moment. I ask, oh God, for your grace, Lord, for him. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I ask, oh God, that you help him, Lord, to maintain his faith and his hope in you. In Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus.